recognize this baby? <laughs> well, uh, he's 30 now, and he just, uh, he just sued Nirvana. So uh, let's talk about that. Um, before we get into that, though, if you're new here, hi, my name's Lija. I'm a real-life lawyer, and I'm on a mission to demystify the law and how it affects your everyday life. Um, that being said, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer, so uh, nothing I say should be construed as legal advice, and you should always seek the advice of a licensed attorney before making any legal decisions. All right, uh, let's just get into this story. I'll note that I have um, super chats and stickers should be activated. Feel free. Any money spent is going towards literally keeping these lights on and allowing me to continue to bring information to you every single week, usually. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, however, I am going to just jump right into this. So if you do have questions, keep them to the end so that I will see them and can answer them because um, I respect your time and I want to get going because I know you guys are uh, really excited. Ooh, is there an echo? Are you guys hearing an echo? Should I? Let's see. Is there less of an echo now? Or maybe it's this room because yes, I live in a giant creepy house and there's a tin ceiling. So it might just be that I am in um, a room that I have not soundproofed properly yet. But you know, we're moving, we're, we're transitioning, uh, we're learning, you know? So let's just get into it. As long as you guys can hear me fine, I think we should be golden. All right. So yeah, this baby, his name is also, well, He's also known, besides being the nevermind baby, he's also known as Spencer Eldon. And he's suing Nirvana for child uh, P-O-R-N. And um, I'm trying to appease the algorithm god, so I'm not going to be saying that word. Um, instead of saying that, I'm going to be saying CP throughout this live stream. So are we all on the same page? What I mean when I say CP. Great. Also, obviously, major content warning, I'm going to be talking about CP, so that might not be particularly appropriate for all audiences. All right, so here's Spencer now. He's suing for what he's claiming to be the distribution of and profiting off of CP from this album cover that was taken of him when he was four months old in 1991. Um, and I got my hands on the complaint I read through it, so you don't have to. I've taken some things to highlight here, um, but I've also linked it down below. So if you do want to read it, please feel free. Um, let's take a look at it. So he's suing not only Nirvana LLC, but also uh, members of the band, Dave Grohl, Chris Novoselic, Novoselic. I knew I was going to mess that up. Novoselic. Um, he's suing the estate of Kurt Cobain. Um, rest is rest in peace. But also to do that, he has to sue the administrator of the estate of Kurt Cobain, which happens to be his wife, Courtney Love. So she's, she's listed, um, as well as the photographer who took the photo and all of the entities that were involved in the, uh, creation of the Nevermind album. Um, he's suing under USC 2255, which allows someone who's a victim of the distribution of CP to sue for either actual damages suffered or for liquidated, liquidated damages in the amount of $150,000 plus attorney's fees. So let's just pull up 18 USC 2255. There she is. Because getting used to reading statutes, it's an important, uh, little exercise. So here it is for you to look at. Um, this is a civil remedy for a criminal statute. What does that mean? So there is a criminal law that says you cannot distribute CP. All right. And that is how someone becomes a convicted criminal. If they are convicted by a prosecutor, by the state under the law that says that it's a crime. This is a part of that same law, but it gives individuals the individual right to bring a civil lawsuit, so not criminal, civil, against the person who perpetrated the types of activities that are outlawed on the crime, and they suffer damages as a result. It's no, what's known as a private right of action. They're allowed to bring this lawsuit in civil court to sue for damages. So that's what he's doing here. Um, none of the de named defendants have been convicted of this crime though, just to make that clear, uh, conviction's not necessary. It's just, he's claiming that they did activities that is distributing CP 
um, which is a violation of these laws and therefore he's been damaged and deserves to be compensated. Interestingly though, if you look at the bottom there, there's a pesky little statute of limitations. It says that any case has to be brought within 10 years of the violation or the discovery of the injury, meaning when he discovered that he had suffered harm, or within 10 years of the victim turning 18. However, this complaint is claiming that their distribution of CP is ongoing. So like the continued sales of this Nevermind album and all of the merch and online sales and everything like that, it's a continued distribution of CP. So I'm assuming they're getting around this statute of limitations issue by claiming that, well, it's continuing to happen. So it's not like it happened over 10 years ago, it's continuing to happen. He's his rights are still being violated. The law is continuing to be violated every time that album is purchased and sold in interstate commerce. Um, they don't mention the statute of limitations anywhere in this lawsuit, however. So um, I'm, a, I'm just assuming what their legal argument is gonna be um, when they go you know, to court or you know, this continues to unfold. So, I'd imagine, however, that the photographer may be able to make a case that they shouldn't be involved in this lawsuit because he might be able to argue he took the photo once, one time, 30 years ago, and so the statute of limitations in his case has gone, has passed already. I'd also imagine that the band members as individuals, like Dave Grohl, could probably argue that um, maybe they're, you know, benefiting Nirvana LLC, but them as individuals are not benefiting from this alleged crime. I can see there being arguments for them getting it dismissed as to the individuals and as to the photographer, especially with regards to um, the statute of limitations. All right, so the way that they describe the photo and the circumstances surrounding how and when it was taken in this complaint are honestly like pretty graphic and like kind of disturbing to read, um, considering especially because this, this photo, this album cover is pretty innocuous at this point. Like it's been around for 30 years. It's one of the most famous album covers ever. So we've all seen it, I'm assuming, like a million times. And I'm sure there was a lot of shock and awe value, value when it came out originally, but 30 years on, I don't know how many people are really shocked necessarily when they look at it. However, the way that they talk about it in the complaint really paints it into this kind of gross scenario as to how the photo came about and it's, it's gross. And so it, it really made me look at the album cover in a new light after reading the complaint. Again, the complaint is linked down below. Um, and, but I will share this one paragraph, which I honestly, I kind of thought it was like a little, more. It was, it was a little over the top. So it says, Cobain chose the image depicting Spencer like a sex worker grabbing for a dollar bill that is positioned dangling from a fish hook in front of his nude body with his penis explicitly displayed. I don't know if, you know, comparing him to a sex worker is necessary or, you know, it's a bit of a, a stretch, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm here for dramatic complaints like I'm just as much as the next guy. So that, I, I just thought that was interesting. Um, they go on to say that the album cover lasciviously displays Spencer. And they also say at, at one point that it, uh, it is, um, they mentioned prurient interests, which was interesting. And I'll tell you why. Basically, I think they're trying to play up the obscenity of the photo. And I think they're trying maybe to preempt some, a potential like first amendment freedom of expression argument because prurient interests and lasciviousness are words that judges love to use in describing uh, obscenity. So we'll back up a little bit. The First Amendment protects your right to freedom of speech and expression. However, there are certain types of speech and expression that are not protected, meaning they can be banned. One of them is obscenity. However, what's obscene? That's a, that's a difficult thing to define. What counts as obscene? It's very different depending on who you ask. I go into this a lot in my um, Lawyer Reacts to WAP music video, um, YouTube video. Check that out after this, this one. So um, one of the ways that courts figure out what is obscene is they talk about 
um, whether something appeals to the prurient interests, meaning things like drugs or sex, um, and which would shock um, and appall the average person based on average culturally accepted norms. That's kind of how they define obscenity. What does that even mean? Still murky. Like even though we have a definition, there's so much gray area when it comes to what counts as obscene. You know, it's open for an interpretation, but I imagine that they are claiming that this photo appeals to prurient interests and is lascivious because they're trying to just really drive home the idea that this photo is obscene. Okay, they then go on to lay out their legal argument, which is this. Um, the statute, 18 U.S.C. 2256, is the criminal statute, federal criminal statute, that defines what is CP. I won't read the whole thing because these statutes necessarily have to be pretty explicit in what they're describing because they're describing what is CP, you know? And it can be, it's upsetting to read. They list it in the complaint, so fair warning, but it's in there. Um, but basically it's where a child is depicted engaging in sexually explicit conduct that that is CP. However, what's sexually explicit conduct? Again, that's open for interpretation. Some people are going to see it in different ways. So of course there's another court case that tries to define what is sexually explicit. It's called the DOST factors or DOST factors. Um, Again, they're really detailed. I'll leave you to read the complaint if you want to, but um, reading the DOS factors, it does make it more clear why they described the photo the way that they described the photo because they, the way they described it lines up pretty clearly with the DOS factors. Again, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but they include whether the child is clothed, um, what the focal point of the photo is, and whether the child is posed or acting in a way that's inappropriate for their age. Um, and that point, then comparing the baby to a sex worker, I guess makes more sense in the context of the DOST factors. Um, so that's probably why they threw that in there, though some may argue it's a bit of a stretch. Um, interestingly, they also note that his parents never consented to the use of this photo, especially not in this way. It says neither Spencer nor his legal guardians ever signed a release authorizing the use of any images of Spencer or of his likeness and certainly not of commercial CP depicting him. However, in this situation, consent, at least when it comes to the distribution of CP, consent doesn't really matter. Why? Because first of all, children can't consent to anything legally. They're not 18, they can't consent. Parents, can't consent to the creation of CP. Like imagine if we said like, oh yeah, it's CP, but like the parents said it was okay. You know, the, that doesn't fly. So um, consent doesn't play a role when it comes to whether or not this is CP. However, it does come into play because I'll talk about this later. Some of the claims that they have against the defendants are for invasion of privacy. And in this case, they're saying the parents did not consent to the use of the photo in this way. Therefore, they had an expectation of privacy. He had an expectation of privacy through his legal guardians in this photo, which was then violated when it was shared this way. They then go on to list the various harms that, they, that he claims he has suffered due to this, to what's happened. Um, so the permanent harm he has proximately suffered includes, but is not limited to extreme and permanent emotional distress with physical manifestations, interference with his normal development and educational progress, lifelong loss of income, earning capacity, loss of past and future wages, past and future expenses for medical and psychological treatment, loss of enjoyment of life and other losses to be described and proven at trial of this matter. Okay. So the lawsuit doesn't go into detail as to um, what specifically he has suffered. It's not saying like he, uh, has panic attacks every week and has cost this much money in, um, therapy bills and plans to, and has lost this much money and lost wages and will in the future, etc. That's something that they are going to go over or try to figure out at trial. Um, it's hard to quantify a lot of that. So the way that it would work is if this ever goes to trial, which 
may or may not happen. A lot of these, most cases settle or are dismissed. So who knows, but if it were to go to trial, they would hire damages experts to figure out those numbers. So they're just saying like, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're making these claims now, but we'll prove them at a later date, which is what you're supposed to do in a complaint. You make your claims and then the trial is for proving the claims. So speaking of claims, they're making six claims against the defendants. One for CP distribution, one for, that's federal, federal CP distribution, one for federal trafficking, claiming that it is a CP venture because they've been distributing and profiting off of it for 30 years. The third claim is for negligence, saying that they owed him a duty of care because he was a minor um, and that their actions were a violation of the law and that he suffered emotional, severe emotional distress because of it. The fourth claim is a uh, California state law CP violation. The fifth claim is for intrusion into private affairs, which is also known as my favorite tort title, intrusion on seclusion. Basically claiming that his privacy, like I said before, his privacy is being violated because he had an expectation of privacy in that photo, which was then violated when it was shared publicly and continues to be shared publicly. That one, that one I feel like he might have a, a hard time with because that tort, the statute of limitations is pretty short on it. And when the album's been distributed for 30 years at this point, it's questionable when his expectation of privacy ended. You know, because he hasn't had an ongoing expectation of privacy in that image, I don't think, for 30 years. So maybe the violation, maybe there was a violation of his or his parents' expectation of privacy in 1991. But at this point, I feel like that's going to be a hard, hard case for that specific claim, the expectation of privacy claim. And then the sixth claim is, again, a violation of privacy claim, this time in violation of the California Constitution. All right. So... As relief, they're asking that the court order the defendants to stop distributing the photo and to pay him restitution and disgorgement of all profits and unjust enrichment obtained because of the use of that image. So we're talking 30 years of album sales, merch sales. Now, of course, he wouldn't be awarded disgorgement of all profits they ever made off of Never mind the album. Um, it's only going to be the profits that can be attributed to the use of the CP, the use of this image. So how much more money have they made because they used this image? How do you calculate that? Who knows? Again, they're going to be spending tens of thousands of dollars on damages experts to try to argue this out. That is if this case ever gets to trial, which probably it won't. Most don't. It's either going to get dismissed, certainly as to some of these defendants, because I think some of these defendants are probably going to have pretty viable cases or motions to dismiss, arguing that they shouldn't be implicated in this at all, but certainly settled, I would assume. But who knows, if it goes to trial, that would be a fascinating thing to see how they calculate that type of disgorgement. Um, and as to the injunction, so they're asking for a judge to order that they stop distributing the image completely, it, that again wouldn't happen unless it actually got to a point where the judge is making a ruling on it. And it's unclear whether the judge would order that like all the albums and all the merch, they have to stop selling all of it with the image period, or if it would be more like a, you have to sell it, but it has to be, or you have to censor it. If you are going to sell it, that would be up likely up to the discretion of the judge. So who knows? And it could be that they reach a settlement and they agree to some sort of censorship outside of court, which is probably the easiest way to settle this at this point. Okay. So that's a lot of information. Basically the entire case, if it does ever go to trial, um, the, the central question, barring any issues of statutes of limitation, which I've talked about and who knows what individuals, what individual arguments there's going to be when it comes to statute of limitations. But the central argument or question is really going to be, uh, is this album cover, is this photo CP? Does it, does it qualify? Because as I said before, the, def the, the definitions leave a lot of gray area. Necessarily so, because life is murky. For example, if someone takes a photo of their child in the bathtub and posts that on social media, is that CP? Some people would say no. Some people would say yes. Is this picture of him in the pool any different than a picture of a child in a bathtub that a parent would post on social media? The complaint certainly paints it as such, but it's ultimately going to be a question of law for the judge to 
determine. Um, then there's also the question of why now? Why is he suing after 30 years of this album being out in the world? And after literally posing for pictures, kind of recreating the cover. He also, you'll notice in that picture, has a tattoo on his chest that says, never mind. So, so why? Why, why, is he, why is he bringing this lawsuit now? I mean, that's, that's a question that, has, that was not answered in the complaint, at least. Um, but, you know, people are, people are speculating. Is it for money? Is it for attention? I will say uh, a more trauma-informed approach to this could be, it could be, I don't know, it could be, that he only recently put his finger on the fact that it was a traumatic experience for him, that it wasn't okay, and that he wants to take action. As much as it's easy to write off the nevermind baby as just seeking attention or money, I think that in my personal opinion, as a person who advocates for people who have, for survivors of trauma, um, I think it's pretty bad form to draw a line between people who have survived trauma and come forward immediately versus those who come forward years or decades after the fact. However, whether or not he actually feels traumatized does not actually have much to bear on whether or not this image is CP under the law. It's CP or it's not. It's a violation of the law or it's not. His trauma is not necessarily a question of whether or not it's CP. However, how traumatized he is, the actual expenses that he's had, the actual trauma he's experienced may come to bear on his um, ability to get damages and to prove the damage that has, it has been caused because he'll need to prove lost wages and, you know, all the other things that he's claiming he was damaged for, you know? So I think that, that question of like, well, you've posed for these pictures in the past, you waited 30 years, um, those might come down, come to bear on his ability to collect damages. As I already said, I imagine a few of the listed defendants will be able to make solid cases that they shouldn't be part of the lawsuit, specifically the individual band members, maybe the photographer, I imagine this lawsuit is eventually going to settle because they always do, but it's a really interesting case that I think is worth talking about. Um, so I wanted to share all of that information with you guys and um, time will only tell what becomes of the Nevermind baby. At this point though, we're waiting to hear back from the defendants, motions to dismiss, maybe settlement, uh, negotiations are happening behind doors, closed doors, who knows? And that's the story. That's it. I'll take questions now. A reminder that super chats and stickers are an option and any money spent does go directly to keeping the lights on. You can also support me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. We do more live streams over there. We do, uh, I just share like more personal insider information about my thought processes. I bounce ideas off people. It's like a fun little community that we're building over there. Um, if you're not able to support me in those ways, I totally understand. Um, you can always support me by sharing this video or any other video of mine that you found informational or entertaining. If you are get interested in getting to know me more on a personal level, um, I talk a lot about myself, my house, my dog over on my Instagram and also on my Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, I owe some patrons uh, some shout outs here and I'm so sorry that they are so late, but thank you so much to patrons Josie, Daniel Bixler, Molly Donovan, Alexander Armstrong, and Fork McSpoon for your support. And as always, a huge thank you to my multi-platinum patrons, Brett Piantech and Anonymous, you know who you are. Thank you so, so much for your support. All right, let's, uh, questions if anyone has them. Let's see. Let me, uh, let me just scroll through these comments. What is the definition of CP in the sense of the law? Oh, I can click on this and show you. What's the definition of CP in the sense of the law? Like I said, it's in the complaint. I didn't go into detail of it with it because it's graphic because to define what it is, you have to explain what it is. It's in the complaint. They lay that out. Basically it's anything depicting a child engaged in sexually explicit activity. There's more detail in the complaint if you want to read it. Okay. Let's see. So 
The, uh, if the photographer could pr produce a signed consent by his parents, wonder how that would impact the case. I can't imagine they used that picture without one. According to the complaint, they did not get any consent. So, and like I said, consent doesn't really matter when it comes to CP because you can't consent to that. It's a violation of the law, whether the parents consent or not. Um, let's see. Didn't he reveal himself as the baby and choose not to be anonymous? I have no idea. If that's the case, that might weigh again against him being able to recover damages, but who's to say? Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, I'm just letting these all load. Thank you so much, Ryan, for the super sticker. Amazing. And thank you, Wizbang Meow, for dog treats. I don't know if you can hear Moira barking in the background. She's mad that she wasn't allowed in here, but my live stream on Patreon this morning, she was sleeping right there and it was deafening her snoring. It's so loud and I wanted, I mean, this is like a serious topic. I didn't want that snoring in the background. <laughs> okay, let's see. Ooh, does this involve any copyright issues? as the album art is a form of copyright, plus it's an album to Nirvana. No, because the photo was taken by a photographer. Well, you know, maybe, but not in this case. So the photo was taken by a photographer and that photographer owns the copyright in that photo the second he takes it. So I imagine that Nirvana paid him for the license to use the photo. So any copyright claim that he would have as a baby, as the baby depicted in the photo, there is none which is a, a common issue that comes up with like paparazzi photos, for example, celebrities just being attacked with, you know, f by photographers and having pretty much no recourse because they're out in public. So they don't have an expectation of privacy and those photographers own the copyright in those photos. So there's not much that they can do. Um, Fork McSpoon. Thank you so much. No questions. Ex thoroughly explained. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Fork McSpoon, one of my favorites. Okay, let's see. Um, Camilla, crazy question, but can someone as an adult post naked pics from when they were a child? <sighs> well, it depends on who took the photos because that is a copyright issue. If your parents took the photo, they technically own the copyright in it. Um, so if they didn't give you a license or permission to do it, um, then probably not. I'm so sorry she's barking in the background. Usually she's a happy camper when I give her a little treat, but. So, um, well, okay, not probably not. Yes, however, it would be more of a copyright issue and less of a, well, it might still be a CP issue because you're still posting potentially CP on the internet, even if it's of you. Because again, you can't consent. Consent is, not on the table when it comes to CP. It's either CP or it's not. Depends on the photo, I think. And then we get into the murky water of what counts as CP. Um, okay, question. Is there a case if it's not CP? Could he still get damages? Well, yes. So some of the claims aren't CP based. Some of the claims are privacy based, saying that they um, invaded his expectation of privacy. And then he also has a negligence claim, which is not CP based. That's, that's just saying that they were negligent in the way that they acted and in the distribution of this photo. And he was damaged as a result. And he was a minor. So whether or not it's CP does not, not necessarily come to bear on the negligence claim or on the privacy claims. But like I said, I feel like the privacy claims might be kind of weak. Let's see. Um, Moira getting fed, always. She just was fed, so I don't know why she's freaking out right now. Let's see. All right, so his father received $200 from the photo from a news source I read regarding this as well. I read that as well. So if he received money, wouldn't he have some legal implications against his father instead? Maybe, maybe however, Probably not, given the statute of limitations, because his father received that $200 at, a, in one, at one time, back in 1991, 30 years ago. It wasn't ongoing, like he's claiming in the complaint. 
is happening with Nirvana. So I would say probably not given that the statute of limitations passed, if this even counts as CP, which is again, a question that we don't know. Let's see. Oh my gosh, things are. Okay. Okay. Is there new information that's come to light that reflects this being used as CP or is the simple profit of the album what moves it in CP territory? I don't think anything new has come to light. I think what he's claiming is that it's been CP all along and they've been profiting off it all along. And so it's trafficking and it's um, distribution of CP. However, again, there is the question of why, why now? Why 30 years later? Who knows? It could be for profits. It could be to get attention. It could be that he was traumatized and only recently figured out that he was traumatized and decided to do something about it. Who knows? Let's see. Okay. I think we would need context of what happened at the shoot, what led up to the shoot, but I'm confused as to where the parents are in all of this. They were there. They consented at least, well, no, they didn't consent according to the complaint, but they were present as far as I, what I've read, they were present at the shoot. They just weren't told what exactly was going to be done with the photos. Um, yeah. And then the complaint goes a little bit more into detail of the context of the photo shoot itself. And honestly, it's a little disturbing, like I said earlier. So like read it if you want, but I didn't want to really go too deep into that. Um, let's see. That's, that's a fair point. If your parents argued it was CP, they'd be in possession of CP. I believe that's probably in response to the, uh, can I post photos of myself as a baby now that I'm an adult? That's a fair point. So yeah, maybe you can, because why would your parents admit to that? How does an infant consent to model for photos? They can't. Consent, children can't consent to things. It's through their parents. As their legal guardians, they have the right to consent or not to consent. But like I said earlier, consent doesn't matter when it comes to CP. You can't consent to breaking the law like that. You can't consent to the creation. Just like you can't consent to like, someone murdering someone else. It's not how it works. Oh, interesting. If it's ruled to be CP, will previous copies of the record become CP? Will people have to destroy them? Lord, I don't know. I mean, yes, because the, if it's if a court of law rules that that photo is CP, then yeah, it's CP. So then would all the people who own the Nevermind album be in possession of CP? I don't know. That's... There's some, there's some wide reaching implications about this case. All right. Okay. Um, what is your opinion on people generally being allowed to take a picture of someone and get the rights to the photo and not the person who is in the photo? I talk about this a lot in my anim Emily Radikowski video. Um, she's had some run-ins with the use of her image. Um, and it's super interesting, but it's a whole separate video topic. Um, I will link it in a card once this is, once I'm done being on live, but go search out my Emily Ratajkowski video. Okay. Um, great. Oh, I don't know about this one. Let's see. Question. Can a woman who competed as a child in beauty pageants sue her parents for sexualizing her? I think that would be a very difficult case. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's, that's a hard one. That would, I would be on a case by case basis. I think depending on like the content they got and yeah, what kind of damages she could prove. That's a hard one. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> we can end with this. Oh my God, please stop saying 1991 was 30 years ago. I drank too much Red Bull and my heart can't take it. It was 30 years ago, Ryan. I know. I know. It's weird. Okay. On that note, that depressing existential note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it quits on this live stream. 
Thank you guys so, so much for joining and for participating. Um, you've been great. This has been fun. Uh, you can keep the comments rolling after the live is done. I'll be in there chatting things up as well. But um, yeah, thanks so much for, for joining and um, have a nice day. Bye-bye.